Hello, I'm Bruce Stell from Unlimited Detail. The purpose of this particular demonstration is to show what games would look like if we were to use unlimited point cloud data. Let's begin by looking at something fairly common, the ground. The ground in nearly all games is a flat uh, texture map, sometimes a bump map, with some polygon pieces of grass sticking up from it. This is an older example, just so you can understand what it is I'm talking about. And these are newer examples. Uh, it still hasn't changed much. We still have flat texture maps with pieces of grass being polygon panels sticking up. This here is ground made with unlimited point cloud data. What that means is we don't use flat polygons like flat pieces of cardboard. We use real 3D atoms. In the past, computers couldn't ever have processed uh, 3D atoms in this amount. But unlimited detail is an algorithm for running unlimited 3D atoms. I know that sounds very strange. You'll have to go to some of the, the other video clips to understand how that's possible. So you can see a big difference. All of those little pebbles aren't a bump map. They're real geometry. They're real pebbles. Of course, we can put larger rocks on the ground now, we can put leaves, we can put anything we want in unlimited quantities. We've made some pretty extreme claims here at Unlimited Detail. We've said that we've boosted graphics by about a thousand times. So I submit for your consideration in the area of the ground going from, well, one flat polygon with some flat polygons sticking up to this level of geometry. If we were to build all of these objects out of polygons, every single little rock on the ground and the larger rocks, the grass, the leaves, twigs in some cases, we would well exceed uh, the number of polygons we're using at present by a thousand times. We're looking here at Armour 2 and we're looking at the base of a tree. This is actually a very good base of a tree. I think on our last demonstration we showed the base of the trees on Crisis and they were six polygons. In Armour 2 the trees are considerably more advanced as you can see but I'm sure you can still see the polygons. Now if we have a look at trees made of unlimited point cloud data Please remember that there of course is going to be a difference between our artwork and the artwork of the games we're seeing. The games we're seeing have been done by professional artists and they've done a fantastic job with the polygon counts that they had. On the other end we have an unlimited polygon count or an unlimited point cloud data count but we're still in the draft copy experimental stages so this is programmer artwork. When professional artists get involved, I'm sure your imagination can quickly project what it's going to look like. Looking up into the trees, of course that's going to be an area where you require a lot of geometry. It's going to quickly gobble up a lot of polygons. This is Half-Life 2 and the reason why I'm showing it to you is I can assure you that nearly everybody back in the days of Half-Life 2 was saying, wow, what amazing realistic graphics. We always think that graphics look incredibly realistic at the time that they're made. It's only later on when graphics are better and we look back that we say, oh, maybe there was room for improvement. Likewise, what will we think of today's trees when we look back? Plants and polygons just plainly aren't good friends. Here is what a tree would look like if you were to make it out of unlimited point cloud data. Every branch, every leaf, every twig, all real geometry. The scratches in the twigs and the branches, real geometry. Every little flake of bark, the whole lot. I think that is an area where we can easily say we have over a thousand times more geometry. I would go one step further to say we have over a thousand times more geometry in one of our branches than they have in their entire tree. That is not in any way to imply criticism upon the work of the artists who are using the polygon system. They have done a fantastic job uh, working with what they had to use. Being a polygon artist is very much a case of you have to constantly come up with new tricks to stretch what little polygons you have. Uh, for example, if you have a look at these cups, uh, that was 
pretty clever, I think. The coffee machine next to it is mostly square, and so it's the friend of the polygon system. It's round objects which are the enemy of the polygon system. It is in no way the fault of the artist that these flower pots look the way that they do. It just is simply that we just don't have enough geometry to make something that properly resembles the real world if we use the polygon system. So it makes sense if there's a way of running unlimited point cloud data that we should swap to it. I mean, all of these objects are meant to be round, and if you're going to make them out of things that are flat, then they'll never truly be round until you move down to so many of these little flat panels, these little flat polygons, that we're actually using point cloud data. Of course, games are more than graphics. Um, these games are all fun. And I don't think that the graphics take away from the fun. But if we didn't keep striving for better graphics, then NVIDIA, ATI and Intel would all be out of business. So would we. So for those whose business depends on it, we'd like to keep you focused on the room for improvement factor. Let's have a look at this rock wall. It looks quite good from a distance, but as we get closer, I assume your eye is well trained enough to see the polygons. In movies, uh, CGI movies, things like Shrek and Final Fantasy, Nemo, stuff like that, their wireframes are at least 500 times more complicated than what we're seeing in games today. And for objects as geometrically intricate Wow, I struggled with that word there. I promise you I do normally have a mastery of the English language. When it comes to rocks, if you want rocks that look more like real rocks, then may I humbly recommend using unlimited point cloud data. This is a little rock bridge. Please ignore those funny shadows which are flickering on and off. We, we're having an issue with the shadows on this particular demonstration. It's not a fault of the system. Shadow mapping is an entirely different section to what makes unlimited point cloud data. But we had to get this comparison video out pretty quickly and didn't have time to fix our shadow mapper. So this is a nice little bridge with some stairs on it. Um, we're looking at, what are we looking at here? I don't even know what game this is. Something modern. It's either Armour 2 or Left 4 Dead. And considering the fact that the sun's up, it's probably Armour 2. But those are stairs, and there's nothing wrong with those stairs. That's, that's actually pretty good for a polygon game. You can see some of the little sides have been chipped off those stairs. It has the classic when one polygon touches the ground with another polygon, perfect straight edge. It would be nice to have unlimited polygons. Uh, oh, look at these train tracks. They couldn't do the, the pieces of wood underneath. It would have been terribly expensive to have done so if you think about it. How many pieces of wood is there underneath a train track? So it just had to be a flat texture. So how would we use unlimited detail? Well, there's two ways to import graphics. You can either laser scan them in. We haven't actually done that yet, but we know that laser scanners produce point cloud data and we run unlimited point cloud data. The other way is to build your polygon objects at the highest settings as though you were building them for movies. And then you can just do a convert to point cloud XYZ color property. And you can import unlimited polygons directly into unlimited detail. We haven't done that yet either. We've been working with uh, direct voxel editors. Another problem which you've probably noticed in your polygon games is that things pop up. Uh, we discussed this in the last video, but there's a system they use in polygons called the model swap system, where you have a lesser model, a medium sized model, a high polygon model. Well, that would imply three when really there's about four to eight of them in a good game. And as you move in and out, we swap models. That saves polygons. When things are far away, you're not using a very complicated model. No one's quite been able to do a nice transition between these, these swapping models. And for the actual artists, you can imagine the problems involved uh, with having to build the objects multiple times. For cost in game development, that does push things up quite significantly. If you have unlimited point cloud data, trillions of trillions of trillions of points, 
then you don't have to save points. You don't have to save geometry by building multiple models multiple times. So here in our little zoom down, uh, you can't see oh, so a few funny little artifacts jumping up there. Those are little issues in the system. Remember, we're new, we're young, have mercy on us. We're like little newborn baby lambs. We're just new, we haven't grown yet. So a bit of compassion. But um, funny little artifacts appearing aside, you could see as we zoomed down, there wasn't any model swapping. And that's a good thing in my opinion. Those of you familiar with all this techno babble, you're probably thinking, advanced displacement mapping shall fly down and save us. Advanced displacement mapping are these funny polygons which are quite advanced and when you look at them from different directions they sort of look like they're sort of 3D sort of. And then when you look at them from other angles they don't look 3D at all. They're a little bit slow to use so you can't use too many of them and they don't save flower pots from looking like hexagons. But they do a good job on the ground. I would say not a job which is as good as if we had unlimited point cloud data, but certainly an improvement over flat ground. The problem with them is, like if we look at this uh, tree trunk here, the advanced displacement map in the middle looks fantastic. Of course, on the edges we're still flat. So they offer help, but not salvation, shall we say. The future for unlimited detail is unknown. One of two things is going to happen. Either we join with uh, one of the major players, ATI, Intel, Nvidia, and I'm not going to say what the situation is with any of them, or due to internal politics that doesn't end up happening, and in which case, it is our intention to become a software alternative a software alternative that gives you unlimited point cloud data. It is our humble ambition to put this on things like Nintendo Wii, Nintendo DS, mobile phones. I'm sure you can imagine what happens if you put unlimited point cloud data on a Nintendo Wii. It somewhat jumps up significantly in power and greatly exceeds a PlayStation 3. I think we'll end the talk there. I'm Bruce Stell. Thank you for the last 12 minutes and 37 seconds of your time.